Hello everybody, Royal Rapids here, and welcome to a uh, low effort video here, because today we're going to be quickly going over this spreadsheet posted by Twitter user uh, Centro Leaks. I'm sure if you follow Leaks, you definitely know about what he's done for the leaking community over the past few Pokemon releases. But today we're going to be going through this entire spreadsheet and checking out leaks from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So obviously, if you don't want to be spoiled on what's going to be happening in the upcoming Pokemon games, obviously you shouldn't have clicked on this video, but giving you a fair warning now, in 3, 2, and 1, we are about to check out what's been going on in this game. So first, let's take a look at the list of Pokemon we have here. Obviously, our grass starter here, Sprigatito, is a pure grass type. But as you can see, the hidden ability, Protean, is about to be crazy on this thing. Obviously, we had Greninja with Protean, and then last generation Cinderace with Libero, which is like the same thing. So, I think it's fair to say that Meowscarada is probably going to be a pretty good competitive Pokemon. In its base form, though, Grats and Dark type, 110 attack, 123 speed. Probably going to be my choice for the main game. It is definitely my favorite design out of the three starters, and the fact that it's a fast attacker is going to fit the main game pretty well. If for Fue Coco, it eventually evolves into Crocolore and then Skeledurge, the fire and ghost type. Kind of an, eh, not a bad spread per se. Really, that it's bulky on the physical side, but not on the special side, but it's a special attacker. An odd stat distribution, but fire and ghost type, decent stats, it should be a fine pick. And last but not least, we have Quaxly, who have also do Quaxwell, and then Quaquavel, the uh, water and fighting type. No idea if I'm saying that the right way. It has Moxie as a hidden ability, which is decent, but unfortunately, with only 85 speed, I don't really know how much of a use is going to get out of Moxie. However, I do think its signature move, or at least some moves that it can learn, have the ability to raise its speed from what I've been seeing. So, I don't know. Quick Wave Volt might have some use, but it won't be my choice for the main story. Obviously, you have Lechonk, which evolves into Oink alone, which has um, different stats. Different stats spread, I should say, depending on if it's a male or a female. As you can see, the male has more attack, and the female has more of a spread out stat sheet. Uh, both base 489. Neither of them gonna be particularly good. Just the generic early game normal type. Not bad per se. Base 100 attack on base 110 HP on the male oink alone is far from terrible, but you know not something I would personally be using. Up next is Dudun Sparse. Dudun Sparse. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Not a fan of this. <laughs> it's just long Dun Sparse. I wanted Dun Sparse good evolution for so long, and although it is pretty good, base 125 HP, base 100 attack, pretty decent stats along the board. Base 520. A, you know, a 105 base stat boost from Dunsparce. The design is not my favorite, just elongated Dunsparce. But, I mean, hey. Base 520, base 100 attack with Serene Grace. Should be a pretty good Pokemon, honestly. Too bad Return is not a move anymore, because that would definitely be a nice one to have for this Pokemon. But, hey, cannot complain. Tarantula and Spite Ops, whatever. <laughs> Nothing special. An early game bug. I was at level 15. One of those things, hey, might be good for the early game, but not much else. You have Nimble and Lokix, a bug and dark type. Once again, not particularly great. Base 450. I was at level 24. Not something I'll personally be using, but a Tinted Lens is a really good ability, so who knows what kind of use it'll find. Relor and Rub Rabska. Another early game bug. I don't know why there's three of them, but I mean, hey, whatever. Bug Psychic type. Second time we've got that in two generations. Obviously, last generation we had Orbeetle. Now we have Robska, base 470, not terrible, base 115 is that special attack, yeah, that's far from terrible, but hey, we'll see if it becomes useful. Graveard, obviously we had released in a trailer, who have also do Houndstone, neither of them particularly special, but Sandrush on a ghost type is interesting, to say the least. Flittle and Aspartha, just pure psychic types here. Was it level 35, base 481? Good speed, good special attack, not a terrible Pokemon per se, but I don't know, we'll see. Opportunist is a new ability and speed boost hidden. Hey, who knows? Maybe this thing can find some use somewhere. Obviously, we have Giraffe who evolves into Farai Giraffe. You have to level up with Twin Beam. Kind of the same thing as obviously evolving like Apalm into Ambipalm with Double Hit or Pyloswine into Mamoswine with Ancient Power or Yanmari and Mega the same way. Uh, that is a way that they tend to do new evolutions. So, I guess learn Twin Beam, level up, and you'll have yourself a Farai Giraffe, which is base 520. Really good HP stat. Pretty much an upgrade across the board from Giraffe Rig. Can't complain there. Obviously, we have Wiglet and Wugtrio here, who have completely mirrored stats from Diglett and Dugtrio, exact across the board, except they're pure water types. So the pitiful 35 HP on Wugtrio, but I mean, hey, is what it is. Nothing really to say there. Um, Dondozo and Duveluza. I is those are both standalone Pokemon, I believe, judging by this uh, this border here. Yeah, Dondozo is quite good. Base 530 with 150 HP. Okay, uh, I'll take that. And here, have Veluza is a water and psychic type. Not nearly as good, but... Oh, okay. I'm not really entirely sure why he's so early in the Pokedex. Base 530, standalone Pokemon. 
Finizen and Palafin. And obviously Palafin here apparently has this ability zero to hero. And when he becomes a hero, he is absolutely busted. Base 650, base 160 attack, 100 speed, 106 special attack. Absolute monster here for Palafin Hero. I have no clue exactly how you get into this hero mode. I haven't really seen anything on it, but I mean, hey, I guess we'll find out when the game officially releases. And apparently you have to evolve him by playing co-op. Probably not something I'm going to use in my main story, but could be a good competitive Pokemon depending on how that zero to hero ability actually works. And uh, okay, I guess we'll, we'll figure that out when, you know, Pokemon Showdown starts releasing Gen 8 Pokemon after the game comes out. Here's Smoliv, Dolliv, Arboliva. Just not, not terrible, honestly. Base 125 Special Attack, 109 Spideff, Grass Normal type. Far from the worst Pokemon in the world. We'll see how it performs. And hey, we finally have our first Grass and Fire type. Capsicate, I've also do Scovillain. Some say Fire, so some say level 30. Well, does it really matter? I don't know. Base 108 in both attacking stats, that's pretty much all it really has going for it. But I mean, a Grass and Fire type, that's a pretty cool typing. I'm glad we finally got one. Tadbulb and Bellaboat, pure electric types. Thunderstone evolution. Nothing particularly crazy. Good HP and special attack here, but eh, whatever. Varum and Revarum. Uh, poison steel types, that's a pretty cool type. Stat, sheet. Nothing particularly special, but I mean, level 40 evolution. Probably not something I'm going to be using, but a Poison Steel is a pretty cool typing. Orthworm, standalone pure steel type, base 480. Earth Eater, that's ought to be a new ability. Tandem Mouse and Mousehold, I absolutely hate these Pokemon, I'm not going to lie. They look <laughs> they look absurd. But a Technician, that might be good. Only base 470, 111 speed. Outside of that, not much, but I mean, hey, with Technician, who knows. C Toddle into C Titan. We already knew about C Titan. Obviously, it was not the base evolution as as a pre evolution in C Toddle. Evolve it with an Ice Stone. 170 HP for C Titan is ridiculous. And with the new um, Snowstorm weather that boosts Ice type defenses, C Titan might actually be pretty good with base 170 HP and a Snowstorm. Hey, Slus Rush, too. C Titan in that new weather might actually be a pretty good Pokemon. We have the pseudo legend of this generation who is also an ice type, a dragon ice Pokemon. We have Frillabax who evolves into Arctobax and do Baxcalibur. Obviously, your base 600 pseudo legendary. Looks to be uh, very good. And um, unfortunately, I was at level 54, but that's par for the course for pseudo legendaries. Not something I'll probably use in my main story team, but it might be a good competitive Pokemon. We'll obviously see that new snowstorm ability hey, with ice body, too. Uh, we'll see how Baxcalibur performs. Tatsugiri. Storm Drain and Commander, which I believe is a new ability, don't quote me on that. Dragon Water is pretty good. Uh, 120 Special Attack, I don't know. We have Cyclozar here, who's like the, well I assumed actually was a pre-evolution to the um, Legendary, but it doesn't seem that's the case. Shed Skin and Regenerator, it's a good ability. Um, decent stats across the board, base 501, carry by that 121 speed, but Dragon Normal. Now the second one of those we've had after Drampa in Gen 7, but I mean, okay. We have Palmy, Palmo, and Palma eventually becomes a electric fighting type. Only base 490, but 105 speed, base 115 attack. And you have to walk 1,000 steps in Let's Go, which I, for some reason at first, thought was like Let's Go Pikachu, but no. Or I thought Pokemon Go too, and I was like, I'm not playing Pokemon Go to evolve Pokemon, but no. It is a feature in the game, like the auto bottling feature from what I could see due to leaks. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be, I don't know, kind of annoying to just run around in circles with your Pokemon, but it's basically like running around for happiness in the older games. Uh, Iron Fist or Volt Absorb or Natural Cure, pretty good abilities for Palma and a Pokemon I could definitely see myself potentially using. Electric Fighting type, good attack, good speed, good abilities. But I may not because I really do want to use this um, this Gen's regional bird here, Watchroll and Kilowatchroll, flying electric types. And the new ability Wind Power, I think it like boosts its speed if it gets hit by wind based attacks. I don't know, I don't know what wind based attacks would be, like maybe Air Cutter, uh, obviously like Air Slash, mostly flying type attacks, I doubt. Kilowatt roll would get much use out of that due to the fact that it's a flying and electric type. I don't see many flying type attacks hitting it, but I don't know. Base 490, good special attack, good speed. It's definitely a Pokemon I could see myself using in the main story if it's found early enough. It was at level 25, so I would assume that it is. And that's definitely going to be a Pokemon I want to bring on my team. Two crucial typings to have electric and flying, and I'm really a fan of this regional bird. Here's Bomberger here, a flying dark type. Standalone Pokemon, nothing really to say about it here. Same thing with Squawkabilly, just a gimmick Pokemon, bad stats. Oh, it changes colors, though. Here's Flamigo, a uh, fighting and flying type, the new Halucha. Um, it has Scrappy, which is nice. Can it ghost types with its fighting type moves? Base 500. Seems to be a decent enough Pokemon. Base 115 attack. Not particularly fast, though, but we'll see. We'll see Cloth. We've already seen already. It was released early. It's not particularly good. Pure rock type. 
Same thing with the Neckly line here. Neckly, Neckle Stack, and Garganackle obviously playing off NACL, the um, chemical code or whatever for salt. It is what it is. Base rock type. Not going to be particularly good, but it does have the new ability purifying salt and also sturdy. Eh, who knows? Glimmit and Gilmora poison rock types. Base 525 for Gilmora. 130 special attack for a poison rock type. That's something. And also toxic debris. I believe that's a new ability. But obviously corrosion we've seen on Salazzle in the past. You can poison steel types with it, which is nice. And we have also other poison types, but I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. We obviously know about Graphii, but we have Shrudel as well. Nothing particularly special. Same thing with Fido and Dashbun, just pure fairy types. But Dashbun does have well baked body, which I believe is like a storm drain for fire type attacks. Or a flash fire type thing, I guess, too. I mean, not particularly special in the stat department, but I mean, hey, it is what it is. Mashif, who's a dark type um, type of dog here, has Intimidate, which is nice, but from what I've read, Intimidate has been nerfed. It only works once per battle. I don't know if that's true, but from what I've seen in leaks, that is the case. So, I mean, hey, it is what it is. It also is a Mavo Stiff, which is a day and night form. Um, we don't know anything about them yet, apparently, but I guess we'll find out. Here we have Bramble and Bramble Gas of the Pokemon that you have to use a Let's Go feature to evolve. Uh, I mean, we don't know what Bramble Gas looks like, apparently, but Grass Ghost type. You know, the, the New Age Trevenant or Pumpkaboo, I guess. It is what it is. Also, we have Gimme Ghoul, who we've already seen, who evolves into Gold Dingo. Base 550. He's a monster special attacker, but not really much else. Uh, good as gold ability. I'm assuming that's new, and you have to get 999 coins to evolve him. Okay, I don't really know what those coins are, but I guess we'll find out. Obviously, now we have our uh, Paradox Pokemon here, which I'm sure you've are all known about. They're all base 570 and have like a beast boost type ability, but not really. It's like the um, the iron ones from uh, Pokemon Violet get boosts in the electric terrain to their biggest stat, and the uh, the ones from Scarlet get boosts in the sun to their biggest stat. And obviously, Coridon and Miraidon have abilities that either set up electric terrain or the sun. Kind of odd that Coridon gets the sun when it's a fighting type and not a fire type, but I mean, it probably also gets a boost in the sun. I honestly can't be quoted on that, but I guess we'll find out more as the game launches. Obviously, we have Great Tusk, which is ground in fighting. Brute Bonnet, Grass Dark, Ancient Suicune, who is uh, apparently going to be a DLC Pokemon. We can't get it in the main story. We have Sandy Shocks, who is a Paradox Magneton and Electric Ground. That is a cool typing, base 570. Screamtail, Fairy Psychic, Jigglypuff, base 570. Fluttermane, which... I'm not gonna lie, it's not really too different. It looks kind of like a Gigantamax, uh, Ms. Dreva sort of. Ghost Fairy. Slitherwing, one of two, um, Volcarona Paradoxes. This one's Bug Fighting. We have Salamence, Roaring Moon, Dragon Dark, New Age Hydreigon, base 590. A little bit better than your average one. Obviously, Future Verizian, um, we're not gonna know about that until the DLC. Donphan, obviously in its future form. Iron Treads, Ground and Steel type. That's interesting to say the least. Uh, Fire Poison, Iron Moth, Volcarona. I don't really know what's so poison about its design, but I mean, hey, New Age Salazzle. Iron Hands, I think is really cool. Fighting Electric Hariyama with 154 HP, 140 attack, 108 defense. Not great on the special side, but that might be a fun Pokemon to mess with. Uh, we have Dark Flying Iron Jugulus Hydreigon. That's something, get rid of the dragon type. Can't say I'm a big fan of that. It loses some special attack. It actually gets worse from base 600 down to base 570. A little more speed, but yeah, not a big fan of Iron Jugulus. Same here with um, Iron Thorn Cyranitar. It's a little bit worse across the board. It's just rock electric type instead of rock dark. I mean, can't say I'm a fan, but Ice Water, base 570 Delibird with Cork Drive, 124 special attack, low key about to be busted, 136 speed. That is going to be something. Here we have Iron Valent, which is like a Gardevoir Gallade combo fighting fairy type, base 590. Um, that's going to be cool, I'd say. 130 attack, 120 special attack. That should be a pretty fun Pokemon to play with. And here we have the four legendaries. Um, excuse me, my pronunciation. We have Ting Lu, Chen Pao, Wo Chen, and Chi Yu. Dark Ground, Dark Ice, Dark Grass, Dark Fire. That's your legendary quartet, your Swords of Justice, if you will. All base 570 across the board. All dark type with different secondary types. We don't really know much about them, but I mean, they, they have Vessel of Ruin, Sword of Ruin, Tablets of Ruin, Beads of Ruin. No idea what those do. I'll have to look more into the leaks about that. But I mean, hey, that's definitely interesting. I'll have to give that give them that on that one they have chinese based names i don't know we'll see what kind of role they play in the story though obviously Coridon and maridon fighting dragon electric dragon or calcum pulse i believe sets up the sun hadron engine sets up electric terrain they're basically the same pokemon but they have swapped like stats around both base 670 i mean it is what it is i love them i love both of their designs i know that they're ride pokemon in the game but i'm assuming obviously you get to use them in battle at some point too i don't know i try not to spoil myself on the story before i play the game tinkatink tinkatuff tinkaton 
Uh, Tinkerton, as you can see here, only has 75 base attack. However, it has a signature move that is 100 accuracy, 160 power without a recharge turn. I believe it like, kind of torments you in the fact that you can't use it two times in a row, but you could like Gigaton Hammer, protect Gigaton Hammer if you wanted to, which is extremely broken, even on base 75 attack. And Fairy Steel is an unbelievably busted Pokemon. So despite the poor attack stat, I still think Tinkerton's gonna get plenty of use. You know, at least in the competitive scene early on with its monster signature move and its phenomenal defensive and offensive typing. Also, you have Charcadet, base fire type, who can either evolve into Amarouge or Celarouge. Obviously, depending on um, your game, Amarouge is in Scarlet, Celarouge is in Violet, and you have to get the Malicious or Auspicious Armor item. Don't know what that is. We'll find out when the game comes out. We have our second Convergent Pokemon, Toad School and Toad Scroll. Grass Ground, Paradoxes, not Paradoxes, uh, Convergent Evolutions of Tentacool and Tentacruel. Mycelium Might is a new um, ability. Don't really know what it does, but hey, maybe we'll find out in one of these tabs. Uh, obviously, Mirrored Stats from Tentacool and Tentacruel. We have King Gambit, the new evolution of Bisharp, base 550. You have to defeat three Bisharp with your own Bisharp holding the leader's crest item. I did not think Bisharp needed an elevu uh, evolution, excuse me, but um, King Gambit looks absolutely busted outside of the fact that its speed goes down, but 135 attack, 100 HP, 120 defense, dark and steel type. I think King Gambit's definitely gonna get some play despite its low speed stat, but who knows, maybe its speed is too big of a distractor. Here we have Pele and Wooper, who we knew about, who evolves into Clodzire. I believe its stats have to be swip swapped here. There's no way uh, Pelte and Wooper is base 490 and Claude Zyre is 430. I would assume that is obviously a typo here. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Uh, I would there's yeah, no. Even if Quagsire is 430, there's no way that Pelte and Wooper is 490. That has to be a, a typo from something else. Obviously, we have Annihilate. As you know, Primeape, one of its old Pokedex entries, said that sometimes it fights so hard, it gets so mad that it dies. Well, it's dead, fighting in Ghost type. Base 535, base 115 attack. Doesn't look particularly special. Decent stats across the board with a nice HP and attack stat. And last but not least, we have our Paldean Tauros, who has fighting type, and apparently it can become either fighting fire or fighting water, depending on what you do to it. However, we apparently don't really know about that yet. Um, look at abilities here. We have new abilities, Lingering Aroma, which is for Oink alone. Contact Pokemon changes the ability, so it's like Mummy, basically. Seed Sower turns the ground to Grassy Terrain when hit by an attack, so it's like worse Grassy Surge, but I mean, hey. Still good to set up Grassy Terrain without a move if you can. Thermal Exchange boosts the attack hit by a Fire move. You have Anger Shell. HP drops to half or less. The Pokemon gets angry. Purifying Salt. The Pokemon's Pure Salt protects it from its status conditions. That's Nackley's ability. Well-Baked Body, that's what I was telling you about from, um... Fido's Evolution. Wind Rider uh, boosts the attack set of Tailwind is up. Guard Dog boosts the attack set of Intimidated. Oh, that's from Mavo Stiff. That's actually kind of cool. <laughs> you get Intimidated, so you get a plus attack move. Uh, Rocky Payload just gives you extra rock stab. Wind Power, you can charge when hit by a wind move, boosting the power of the next electric type move. Obviously, that, that's Kilowatt Rolls thing, but you can boost Tailwind as well. So you can set up Tailwind and get boostier electric moves. That could be cool. Zero to hero. The Pokemon transforms into its hero form when it switches out. So all you have to do with Palafin is switch out. And then you become a base 650 uh, Pokemon there. That That's something. That's definitely something. Uh, Commander. Pokemon enters a battle. It uh, goes inside of the mouth of an ally. Don Donzo. I, I, I don't I don't understand. But we'll go with it. Electromorphosis. The user gets charged and hit by an attack. Boosting the power of the next electric type move it uses. That's Bellable. So it gets hit and gets an electric type move boost. Uh, okay. Protosynthesis. Boost the Pokemon's most proficient stat in harsh sunlight. Or if the Pokemon is holding booster energy. Only activates once. Oh, it's for the ancient. Yeah, that's Cork Drive. I already explained about that. In electric terrain, you get you boost your most proficient stat. So it's like a beast boost, but instead of like a moxie thing, it gets boost in either the sun or an electric terrain. Vessel of Ruin. Full immunity to Pokemon status moves. Vessel of... Oh, I was good as gold. My bad. Vessel of Ruin. A look... Lowers the special attack of all Pokemon. Sword of Ruin lowers the defense. Tablets of Ruin lowers the attack. And Beads of Ruin lowers the Spideff. That's... It's cool, I guess. That's obviously the legendary Quartet's uh, signature abilities. Or Calcum Pulse and Hadrian we already talked about. Opportunist. If the opposing stats is boost, the Pokemon seizes the opportunity to boost the same stat for itself. When a Pokemon eats ability, it'll eat it one more time at the end of the turn. That's Kudshu. That could definitely be pretty good. Oh yeah, all the Pelde and Tauros have that along with Farai Giraffe. Sharpness powers up slicing moves. That is Gallade's new ability. Also, Hisuin, Samurott, Cleavor, and Veluza get it as well. 
King Gambit gets Supreme Overlord. Its attack and special attack are boosted for its allies that have already been defeated. Oh, so if your Pokemon gets defeated in battle, Farai, not Farai Jeff, oh my god, uh, King Gambit gets a special attack boost. Completely useless in Nuzlocke, well not useless, but pretty useless in Nuzlocke, but in the main story I could definitely see that being uh, useful. Co-star, copies and allies, um, stat change, this Flamigo, that would be useful in double battles, I guess if you have like an agility Pokemon or something. Toxic Debris, scatters poison spikes on the opposing team, so you get toxic spikes after getting hit. That's, that could definitely be very useful. Armor Tail, makes opposing Pokemon unable to use priority move, that's Farai Giraffe's other ability. I could definitely see that being very useful. Earth Eater, hit by a ground type move, the Pokemon has HP restored, so it's like water absorbed for ground moves, only Orthorm has that, and it's a steel type, so that turns a weakness into an immunity. And Toad School and Toad Squirrel gets Mycelium Might. Always act more slowly when using status moves, but these moves will be unimpeded by the ability of the target. Oh, so if they have like Vital Spirit, you can still put them to sleep. Not a great ability, but I could see it having its uses at some point. Um, obviously our regional decks here we'll take a look at. I'll just scroll through it pretty quickly to see all of the returning Pokemon. I believe there's 400 in total. I guess pause the video if you want to see anything here. It's not particularly special by any stretch of the imagination. We have a decent amount of returning Pokemon from different generations. It's pretty even across the board from what I've seen. But uh, yeah, no evolution this generation, unfortunately. I think that we're probably stuck with the ones that we have, you know, for the foreseeable future. Hey, Venomoth, big return. Same thing with Breloom. He has not been in a game in a while. He is back now, too. Quite a few uh, Gen 8 Pokemon in this uh, decks as well. But yeah, obviously, we'll go all the way up to Pokemon number 400, which is me right on. Obviously, we'll probably get more in the um, upcoming... Uh, DLC, which apparently is going to have, you know, new Paradox Pokemon, you know, new stories, potentially a third Legendary. But yeah, um, this is what we know so far about the Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet after a recent data mine. And if you guys like this type of video, uh, let me know so I can cover more things like this in the future. And if you're a fan of Pokemon in general, I would appreciate it if you could please check out my challenge runs that I do, such as my Nuzlocke solo runs, other things like that. I put a lot of effort into those videos. And if you guys like Pokemon, I think you'll like those videos. So... Uh, be sure to leave a comment down below on something you'd like to see in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And be sure to smash that subscribe button if you like more videos like this. So I'll be seeing you guys in whatever comes next.